Hello, 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 and welcome to KOS Mod for Newbies. Cheers, Kevin here, and it's been a while since I've been making KOS videos, or really videos of any sort, and I feel like it's time to bring it back. KOS, or Kerbal Operating System, is a do-it-yourself autopilot mod for Kerbal Space Program. And there are some truly phenomenal things you can do with this mod. You'll see people doing SpaceX-style hover slams, or setting up rovers that won't flip, crazy drones and VTOLs and all of that fun stuff. And the best part is that you don't need to be a skilled pilot to do any of this. We can write the code ourselves, then sit back and watch it happen. Now, what you're seeing here is a stock craft, the Kerbal X, with a KOS CPU attached to the side. And it is running on autopilot, making its way over to the moon. That is what we're going to build in this upcoming series of videos. By the end of this series, even if you're starting from complete scratch, you should be able to get a spacecraft landed on the moon. As for getting it back, you may be on your own. Now this is stuff that I've worked through in a previous video series, but that was a very, shall we say, exploratory video series. We took a lot of detours, and unfortunately, a little bit of the code has changed since then. This time, I'm going to be walking you through each step, and today we're going to start off by getting you set up with the mod and with an editor so that you can write your own autopilot scripts. So whether you're interested in learning a little bit about how to program or are maybe dusting off an old copy of KSP, or you've seen some cool KOS scripts and want to get in on the action, I hope you'll enjoy the next few videos. Now, did I remember to lower the landing legs? So we're going to be going through installing three things today. And before we get to these three items, I want to walk you through real quick actual KSP itself. Now, presumably you have a copy of a KSP. You've installed it some way. In my case, I have it installed by Steam. And I apologize. This is probably going to be a little bit redundant for most of you. But I want to make sure that everybody is covered. I'm going to go ahead and right click and click properties. And uh, you can go ahead and take a look over here. There's the beta tab. Now, this is helpful to know if you uh, find yourself locked on a version, you're using some mods and you don't want to update, well, you can go back and run a previous version of KSP via the beta program. And then you can play with the mods until the mod developers have a chance to go ahead and update things. Now, to access um, the files associated with the game, which we're going to need to do, we can go into local files and say browse local files. We'll go ahead and click on that. And boom, we're popped right up into our Kerbal Space Program install directory. And those files are all here. So we've got ships, we've got game data, we've got all this sort of stuff. So mods are going to be installed here. Our craft files are in here under ships, space plane hangar or ships, VAB, vehicle assembly building. We've got all these craft files and we're going to be returning to this a little bit later. First thing we're going to install is CCAN. This is the Comprehensive Kerbal Archive Network. This is what this is. You get this lovely little uh, application that helps you install and manage mods. And this is going to be the easiest way for us to get KOS installed. So we'll go ahead and download this. Now, the way that we can actually download this, you can say, okay, um, doesn't actually say right here in the description, blah, 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 blah. That's a little unfortunate. It feels like this could be, right. I mean, people for the most part are, okay, there we go. User guide, user guide. This is a lot of reading, okay? Uh, that's kind of annoying, but that's okay. We can go to, um, actually, it's funny because if you Google it, you end up on the uh, releases page. Uh, and where where did the releases page, yeah, okay. This is how you get to the releases page from here. Lots of different ways to install this. This works across all of the different platforms. We're gonna go ahead and install, uh, we're gonna grab ccan.exe. Now this is GitHub, which is something we're gonna be using for uh, some KOS stuff and uh, for Zcan, you see I already have a copy of it that happens to be installed, shame on me, but we'll go ahead and open this up. We'll say, hey, it cannot be verified or whatever, and we, yeah, we'll go ahead and run it anyway. Once this launches, boom, there we go. And it says, hey, uh, do you wish to automatically check for updates? So we can say yes or no, um, sure, why not? I'll let it go ahead and check for updates. And now it is going ahead and fetching its knowledge of all of the mods that are currently available. Um, sure, go ahead and refresh that every time you're loaded. And now we see there are all these mods that we can currently install. Um, I can go ahead and filter these by the ones that are compatible with the current version. You see, because we're just after a, a release, uh, not as many compatible here, but we're gonna search here for KOS. And here we go, KOS scriptable autopilot system. I wanna go ahead and check that. I also, while I'm at it, I'm just, I'm gonna do some simple beautification stuff. Um, let's see, SVE, stock visual enhancements. 
I want this. And of course it's gonna tell me, hey, you should also install this mod if you're using this, which is a nice thing about CCAN is that it handles some of these dependencies for you. Um, I'm gonna install environmental, visual enhancements, and I think that's all I'm actually gonna be installing. Now I'll click apply changes. Now it hasn't done anything. Um, yet, once I click apply changes, it's going to say, hey, here are all the things I'm about to install. And before, when it asked if we wanted to install the uh, texture pack for stock visual enhancements, it let us select what we wanted to. KOS has a dependency on module manager. A lot of mods have that dependency. It goes ahead and just automatically throws it in here and it says, hey, this is why I'm about to do this. We can say, hey, this all sounds good. It's going to go ahead and modify our KSP install by doing that. We can click apply. And it says, oh, this has been recommended. And we'll say, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, do whatever you need. This has also been suggested by KOS, Remote Tech. I don't think that we necessarily need to continue, that, that Remote Tech provides a huge amount of value now that there's uh, equivalent stuff in the stock game. So I'm not going to go ahead and check that. We'll go ahead and click continue. And we begin our installation. It's downloading all the stuff. It'll go ahead and toss it into our KSP install. And we don't have to worry about extracting the... Uh, mods into the appropriate folders. And that's gonna go ahead and pop us right back out here when it's done with its installation. Now, if I unclick this, you can see it shows us, hey, that one has a checkbox. We can also now filter by the ones that we have installed. Um, if we wanna go ahead, as soon as updates are released for these, um, we can go ahead and, and update them here as well. Um, we can also uninstall. So I'm actually gonna uncheck KOS because I want to walk through how to install it manually, uh, just so that you know how. Um, because on occasion, uh, the devs may have a beta release that they're saying, hey, you know, we've pushed out this release. We want people to kind of pull it down and see if you can break things. Um, so I want to show you that that's really easy to do as well. So the lazy thing is to just install CCAN and manage all your mods that way. But if we want to uh, install stuff from, from uh, directly, we can do that as well. So here is uh, KSP KOS. You can search GitHub plus KOS. Um, or you can find the forum post or the subreddit and get links that way. Um, this is all the code for the mod. And of course, it actually gets built into stuff. You can also find a link to the documentation here if we click through on there. This is a very, very useful page to probably have bookmarked um, or at least be able to Google your way back to because there's a lot of information about uh, the language itself um, and a lot of code samples and things like that. Um, we'll be referring to that uh, liberally. But if we click over to releases, now we can see all of these releases. This is a basic compatibility for 141. This is release version 1.1.5.2. 1 um, this is a backport uh, for uh, another version of KSP. This is a backport for realism overhaul users. This is a hotfix version. This is, you know, and so a lot of times these may be beta e things. Um, this also has a little thing that shows, hey, this is what, you know, what version of KSP this is for. So if you're stuck on a version of KSP for other mods, you can go ahead and just find the most recent release that works for you. Um, since we're not hampered by any such restrictions, I'm going to go ahead and download uh, this zip file. So I'll just click that. Um, I'm, in, I'm in the KSP game directory. I can go ahead and just paste this KOS zip file here. And I can just extract this in this directory and says, hey, by the way, the module manager is, already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? Well, that's fine, sure. Um, and if we look here now, KOS is inside our game data folder. And that includes some parts and some plugins and all of that lovely Yes. The next thing we're going to talk about is Visual Studio Code, and this is going to be a tool that we're going to use to write the programs that we execute in the game. Now, the reason for doing this, there is an editor inside the game, but it's a little bit tricky to use. You don't get things like syntax highlighting. You don't get things. It, it's just it's easier to edit your code outside of the game, jump into the game and write it. So we're going to install Visual Studio Code, which is available on Windows, on Mac, on Linux. We're going to work through it. It's not a tool that I personally use, but the tools that I personally use aren't particularly accessible anyway. This is going to be something that's going to work well for everybody, so we're going to go ahead and go with that. I'm going to go ahead and download this, and while that's doing its stuff, okay, it says, thank you for downloading Visual Studio Code for Windows. That's going to go ahead and download. In the meantime, I'm going to jump over to the game data, uh, the KSP folder. We're going to look under ships and here where we could view our crash files. We're going to want one more folder. And this folder we're going to create, it's going to be called script. And all of those files that we're going to create, that we're going to run in the game, we're going to place in here. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead, we'll go back and install Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and click run. 
And uh, if you are familiar with Visual Studio Code, you're gonna probably be way ahead of me. I'm still kind of working my way through this software, but it's not too difficult to understand anyway. So um, yeah, don't, whatever you wanna do for blah, 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 that's fine. I'm just gonna leave it as the defaults. Go ahead and do this installation. And as soon as this gets up and running, we can actually install um, an extension or a plugin, or a, I don't remember what they call it in this particular environment, to handle our KOS files and do some nice syntax highlighting and make it easier uh, for us to write our code. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. Lovely, we're programmers now, right? Okay, Markdown, blah, 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 blah. We don't care, this is release notes about the latest version. I'm gonna say, hey, um, add a workspace folder. What does that even mean? I don't know. But I'm gonna tell it that uh, ship's script is my workspace folder, maybe. I don't know what that means, but okay, let's try that. Um, let's, it's, it's untitled workspace, fine. Uh, let's create a file called hello.ks. Now, .ks is the extension for KerboScript programs. We're gonna go ahead in here. I'm gonna say print, ah, hello, woo, hello, and then a dot. And it looks like, because I did have an installation of this already, it may have already installed uh, the KOS extension. We'll see. Um, this is the, yeah, the extensions. And uh, let's go ahead and look through, and here we go. It does have this installed. So let's go ahead and uninstall it so we can actually see how this works from scratch. I did do a, an uninstall of this so that we could actually look and see how this goes, but uh, we can search extensions in the marketplace and this should not be, okay, go away. Go ahead, reload, whatever, okay, there we go, now it's gone. Okay, so now look at that. Oh, this is what we saw originally. No highlighting, it's terrible, how awful. It has line numbers and that's about it. And it's, we can control plus to zoom it in and make things easier. And actually look at this, how about that? There's an extension that can help us do wonderful stuff. Let's click on that and let's see. Now there are a couple of examples. They say, hey, I recognize that file extension. Kikiri Adventure stuff, cow script language, uh, Kag, Kagex, no idea. Kerbal operating system, that sounds very familiar, right? Okay, so highlighting and autocomplete for Kerbal script from Kerbal operating system. So we've gone ahead, we've installed this, and now let's close this. No, come on. Okay, fine. Reload. Reload, and now we have this extension. Wonderful. Okay. Um, I just want to verify because I, I haven't used this workspace feature, but I think that'll probably work. I'll go ahead and save that. And then if we go over here, okay, good. It's saving it into this ship's script folder. And presumably now we can just always kind of open up here. What does this even do? I don't understand. I mean, whatever. It, that's, that's fine by me. Let's create a new file. You know, something else. Chaos. Not chaos. Whatever. We'll just continue to create uh, these files and we'll create them in that folder and then we can access them from within the game. So let's write a really quick script uh, to try and uh, get our rocket uh, kind of going, right? So we're going to say, let's see, lock throttle to one. We'll say print blast off and a dot. All of these things end with a dot. We're going to go into kind of in depth what all of this terminology actually does, but I wanted to get you kind of set up with this first. So if you want to copy this stuff directly for now, or even try making modifications as uh, the spirit moves you, feel free. I'm going to lock steering to up, and we're going to stage. We're going to wait two seconds, and we're going to stage. And... Um, yeah, that's probably fine. That'll be great. Call that hello.ks. That's wonderful. And uh, we'll go ahead and run with that and uh, jump into the game. Okay, so right off the bat, um, there's some stuff that we have to deal with. One, it's asking us, it's telling us some information about the terminal font. It says, hey, by default, we'll choose our font from a list of guesses. There are ways to customize the font in the terminal in the game. We're not going to worry about that. If you want to worry about that, you go ahead and read this stuff, but whatever. Um, this... It has nothing to do with KOS. This happens to be just the visual enhancements that I installed. Um, no, I don't care about you checking for updates because I'm managing that with CCAN. So there we go. We'll go ahead and let this thing finish booting up. Of course, I have the Making History expansion. We're not going to be using any features from that expansion, at least in this tutorial. Um, so don't worry if you don't have that. And we've got 390 patches applied. Fantastic. Lovely. All right, we're getting the sound and um, we have lovely clouds and stuff because we installed some beautification stuff. Wonderful. I'm going to go into settings real quick and I'm going to go into graphics 
and I'm going to need to change my screen resolution because this is bleh. Um, and then I also want to set um, ambient light up a little bit. I know this is something. Where was that ambient light? There we go. Ambient light boost. Turn that up to 50%. That's just going to make it a little easier for you guys to see. Uh, let's go ahead and start anew. We'll call it, call this KOS for noobs. And whatever. Uh, we're going to make this a sandbox game. Uh, you can go through and do this with career. You can do it with science. You can do it with whatever. But we're just going to try and make this as easy as possible. And in, in dealing with the limitations of career, along with the limitations of KOS, is going to be interesting. Okay, KOS has detected there are one or more connectivity managers available, blah, 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 blah. So this is if you did have Remote Tech installed, KOS can operate with it, but it can also operate with the in-game stuff. So we're going to, and particularly ComNet is the name of the in-game uh, version. So we're going to say, go ahead and permit everything. We don't have to worry about it. If you had Remote Tech installed, then maybe you would care about that, but whatever. Thanks, I've got it. Let's jump into the vehicle assembly building. We're going to open up Kerbal X, because this is the one that we're going to get to the moon. Right, so we've got this lovely craft here, and uh, let's look at the KOS parts. Command and control is where we're going to be looking at. So uh, we have the advanced re reaction wheel and blah. We also have this scriptable control system. That's an inline part. We have this Compomax radial tubeless, which is another part. I'm going to go ahead and put that on here. I'm going to enable snapping. This is a fresh install. This also has a nice little solar panel on it, which is nice. Uh, the Cal 9000, which is the most advanced scriptable control system. We can go ahead and drag that on here. Oh, it's very hard to see, and I think, I think it clips through this part. Yep. It's, uh, it's a tiny one. Let's see, where can we plop it down there, right? And then scroll down and see if we can... Uh, uh, there we go. A lovely little tiny little thing. And, uh, of course, we can turn the light on. Wonderful. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, lovely little piece there. And uh, let's go ahead and take that off. There's also a uh, smaller inline uh, for probes and whatnot. There we go. So we can put that in as well. Uh, the one that we're going to be using in this uh, tutorial is uh, the radial tubeless because it just happens to have a solar panel. So hey, it saves us a little bit of effort. Um, it doesn't particularly matter too much. Some of these have different disk capacities, which limits how much uh, you can store, how, how large the files can be on the drives. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use this one because it makes it nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to call this the Kerbal X++. And uh, we can start the process of getting this out on the launch pad and looking at what this mod actually actually does, right? Now, of course, you can also expand the disk space. It is going to slightly change uh, the mass but that's okay too. So here we are out on the launch pad. I'm gonna go ahead and hover over here. We have this little button called KOS, right? Um, now, I can click this to, to keep it open. There's some information here that we're not going to talk about. There's uh, Telnet, there's choosing our fonts and, and stuff. We're not gonna go into any of that. What's important for us right now is that we actually can see, hey, there is a CPU that is active. I, and uh, we can go ahead and pop this open. We can click this to open the terminal and we get this lovely little, um, you know, old fashioned -y uh, terminal. And I kind of wish this sudden, oh uh, well, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this real quick to show you that you can also right click here uh, within the game and say, hey, I want to toggle power. I'll see, say, look at the powers off there. And uh, I can also just open the terminal directly from here. So that's wonderful. And we'll go ahead and close this up. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you do have this selected, um, it's going to be capturing your keyboard input. So if I were to try and if I'm typing space, I'm not uh, launching myself to space. I'm in fact typing in this terminal. So I can do things like say print uh, hello, like we did in our script. And it says hello. So that's wonderful. Let's go ahead and say lock throttle to one. And we'll say stage. Oh, and of course we are still locked. So let's type stage again. And there we go, we're on our second stage. So that's pretty phenomenal. That's very exciting. Um, let's see, turn. Okay, turn is not a value, is not a variable. It doesn't know what that means. There are rules to what we have to be typing here. And uh, mm, this will be interesting. We'll see what happens. Now, you could sit here and manually try and type your way to space, uh, but as a matter of principle, oh yeah, in fact, we need to stage some of these stage. There we go, right? We're doing a great job. We're doing a fantastic job. Um, 
easier though is to write in advance what we want the ship to do. And let's go ahead and actually edit a file inside the game. I'm going to go ahead and say edit um, uh, start.ks. And of course, I have .ks, but I also, I'm also putting a dot here because it's the end of a file name. So I'll go ahead and do that. And it says, hey, new file. And it's opened up this little additional window here. And of course, I'm going to need to move some stuff up a little bit because it's stuck here on the bottom. Now, this is why we went through the trouble of installing Visual Studio Code because it's a little unwieldy to type in here, but we can do it. We can say stage and stage again. I'm actually going to say let's wait two seconds before we stage again and print uh, to space. And, you know, actually I'm realizing, hey, at the beginning of this, we forgot to lock our throttle. So let's do that. We'll say lock throttle to one. And there's our code. There's our lovely little program. We'll go ahead and save this. Go ahead and exit this. And it says, hey, okay, I saved your changes to a file uh, on one colon slash start dot ks. This is just like your C, C drive or your D drive uh, on a Windows machine or, you know, equivalent on, on a Mac or Linux, etc. cetera. Um, the, the one drive means that it's the hard drive that's associated with this CPU core. Zero is a special hard drive that exists at Kerbal Space Center, and it's the files that are actually on the disk in the folder that we uh, created and wrote stuff to with Visual Studio Code. We'll get to that in a moment, but in the meantime, we'll say run path, and then I'm going to give it some parentheses, and I'm going to give it a quote, and we'll put in where it told us it saved that file and close the quote and close the parenthesis and then dot. And then in theory, after two seconds, we stage again and interesting. So it did stage twice, but all of a sudden, okay, so clearly the problem is that we were running something that we wrote quickly on our own, right? It's better to use the one that we wrote earlier. And if we go ahead and uh, we can say run path uh, zero slash what did we call it? We called it hello.ks. That's what we wrote earlier in Visual Studio. We can actually run this program uh, that is at the Kerbal Space Center that we wrote outside of the game entirely. And it'll go ahead and run. It says blast off and we wrote some equivalent code. Oh, unfortunately, this isn't working as well. Why on earth might that be? So back over in our editor, we have the program. Lock throttle to one, print blast off, lock steering to up, stage, wait two seconds, then stage. And that should work, right? But instead, the whole thing goes dead. It stages, but it seems to go dead. And in fact, it's doing exactly all of these instructions, one after another, and then the program is done. When the program is done, it releases its control of the throttle. It releases its control of anything. And so suddenly, we have no throttle. We, our thrust goes down to zero, and uh, things crash. One, This is a very common issue that I see a lot of people struggle with. They go, hey, there's something wrong with my program. Well, no, there's no error message. If something's wrong with your program, you're going to get an error message. In fact, the program ran just great, and now it's done, and now your crash is going, oh, well, I don't know what to do. One thing we can do is just keep this program running forever. So as a very quick fix, just to make this work, we're going to add wait until false. I'm going to put a period there. This is going to say, hey, keep running this program until whatever this is becomes true. False is never going to become true. So we'll go ahead and save that, and then we'll jump back over into KSP. Maybe? Let's see. Well. Clearly, there is some revision for us to do. But we will tackle that in the next episode. I hope you stick around. I'm excited. We're going to get to the moon. Uh, just hopefully in one piece.